All right, good morning, guys. So this morning, what we're going to actually have a look at is is virtually almost pretty much the same thing as yesterday, okay? Um, and for the reasoning of, I just kind of got to want to get everybody eased into the course, okay? Um, now, the difference of today, when I tried home to the, the homework questions for today's lesson, a little bit more difficult than yesterday's, okay? So, um, but I think the other important part of this is we're given all these weird-looking functions, right? And we're, we're applying what it is that we learned yesterday, and we're going to continue to do that today, um, at least for this portion of the lesson. This afternoon, we'll kick it into another gear. But um, I think it's important for you guys to remember what this actually looks like, right? I mean, we get, we're okay with what a parabola looks like, but I think these are a little bit harder to visualize in terms of what they like, where they are in the graph or what they're doing or things like that. So today, what I want to do is just a little refresher of how do we produce these graphs um, and what it is that we're actually solving for. You know, yesterday we solved for like the slopes of tangents, right? We saw what those were, but relative to a graph, like a rational variable expression that we see here in example one, um, what does the slope of the tangent look like? Where is it located? Um, and just to make it a little bit more interesting, um, we want to find in this particular question, we want to find the tangent and we want to find the, the, the normal, right? So the, the equation of the line that is perpendicular to the tangent, okay? So that's going to be the, the main difference for this morning. It's, I'm going to reinforce the skills that we learned yesterday because it's very critical for the, the overall movement of the course. Um, and then I just want to put on top of that knowledge that you guys already have okay so just producing these graphs and things like that so that's where I'm gonna start here I just want to find you know I want to try and produce a graph of this this this, this function g of x right 2 over 3 root uh, 1 minus x at this particular point okay so there's a couple things that I think we need to remember in producing graphs of rational variable expressions there's two things right off the top, I would say. We're going to look at vertical asymptotes and horizontal asymptotes, right? You guys will remember vertical asymptotes are values, x values, that um, create a zero in the denominator, right? And so it creates this uh, situation where we're dividing by zero. That is a... a uh, a problem that's a vertical asymptote specifically right so uh, x values that set the denominator equal to zero okay so in this particular question it looks like the vertical asymptote for this one would exist when x equals one so we go down to our graph you know you can put your your vertical asymptotes on here here's one here and we're just going to say, here's, here's a vertical asymptote, right? And don't forget that this is a, this is a, uh, a vertical line, right? And so it needs a, an equation appropriately. X equals one. You could even say that's my vertical asymptote. And then the second thing is you had a list of, um, rules around what a horizontal asymptote was, right? And horizontal asymptotes, if your degree, you're looking at the degrees of, of the polynomials that exist in the numerator and the, and the denominator. In the numerator, you had three different scenarios, right? You had where the degrees in the numerator were uh, less than the denominator. You had a scenario where the they were equal, the degrees, and then you had one where the degree in the numerator was greater than the denominator, each of which produced a different kind of vertical asymptote. Right? So for this particular question, the degree in the numerator, there are no variables in the numerator. We just have a constant term. So there's, there's a degree of zero in the numerator, and in the bottom, our degree would be one half, right? because a square root turns into a one-half from our radicals, right? So we know that the degree in the numerator is less than the denominator, and so our horizontal asymptote is zero, okay? So we can go to our graph and draw 
our horizontal asymptote. And again, this is an equation of a line, but this time every value along this horizontal line from here to here, every value, every y value specifically, is zero. And so that is our equation of our horizontal asymptote. And this was typically where we would start in producing um, the graphs of these rational expressions, right? Variable expressions. Okay. Now to actually produce this graph, we were interested in what is the behavior around each of these asymptotes? So for instance, if I were to create a little table here, right? And I wanted to find, I wanted to find, uh, you know, what happens if I plug in a particular x value? What does, what gets spat out, right? That allows you to create the picture, right? And remember, y could be called uh, g of x, right? And so, if I were to plug in, I don't know. Let's let's uh, let's check the behavior over here. Okay, what's what's the graph doing? Is it above the horizontal asymptote or is it below it? Is I, I suppose our question, right? And so we could check something way over here on this end of the graph. Like let's say I don't know, we could check uh, negative eight, for instance, right? If I were to plug in negative eight into the into the equation, right? One minus negative eight, right? I'll do this one, and then we'll see. Uh, you guys will be able to uh, see everything else. So we'll go square root of 1 minus negative 8. Well, that's going to be the square root of 9, right? So we're going to get 2 over uh, 3 times uh, square root of 9, which would equal uh, 2 over 3 times 3. Okay, so we get a positive number, right? The overall, like how big 2 over 9 is, isn't too, too relevant when in producing um, the overall graph. I'm going to get rid of this. Okay, you guys can see how this works now. Okay, the actual numerical value isn't that big of a deal. We know that at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, the value is going to be 2 over 9. Okay, so we're on, we're on the upper half. It came out to be a positive number on the upper half of the graph. Okay, so we know our graph is doing something like this. It's approaching the horizontal asymptote as we go out further and further towards negative infinity. Okay, well, let's check. Let's check what the value might be at, uh, let's say, negative 3. Oh, and I'm just missing something. I'm realizing, guys, I want to find the value. It's not at x positive 3. It's at negative 3, sorry. Okay. We'll correct that in a minute. Okay. So I want to find the value at negative 3. Well, it turns out that the value is one third. Right. When I go to plug that in. Okay. And so when I go find, uh, here's your 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and we're at one third. Okay. I'll erase the arrow and then we'll connect the dots after, okay? Now, let's go see what happens when I plug in zero. Well, when I plug in a value of zero, I get two thirds, right? So we're getting closer and closer to one. I might be off a little bit with the grid, you know? It was a little high maybe with that one. One third is down here maybe. Okay, and when I plug in uh, a value of like, I, so, Let's keep in mind what we're doing. I want to plug in a value way over here, an x value, and then I want to plug in an x value that's very, very close to this vertical asymptote because it looks like the graph is going to, it's not going to just decide to go down here, I don't think, right? We're going to confirm that by saying, um, what is the value when I plug in? Uh, let's something really close to um, x equals 1. So let's say it'll check 0 0.9. Let me write down this. So let's let's check 0 0.9. What happens when I plug in 0 0.9? I get a value of 2.1. Okay, so we're going to end up uh, somewhere up here, right? And so we know that our graph is going to do something like this. You know, we're going to approach this vertical asymptote, and then uh, and then 
also like uh, approach the horizontal asymptote. Okay, so that's pretty much how you guys create this graph, right? Which is uh, for the large part uh, <coughs> review. Okay, now the second part of this question is we want to actually contextualize what it is we're actually doing here, right? Um, in terms of actually solving for um, tangents and things, right? Tangents and normals. So I maybe should have spaced my y axis a little bit better, but that's okay. Um, what is what is it we're looking for? We're looking for the tangent, right? And the tangent we said was, and sorry, we're looking at uh, the, t the slope of the tangent. I think it was off at this point, too. One, two, three. Sorry, I was off with this. Okay. The graph should have, should have put it to uh, one, two, three right here. Okay. So I'm interested in when x equals negative 3, I want to find the slope of the tangent at this point. So I'm going to draw my tangent here. Well, it looks like if I were to draw a tangent, it would look something like this, right, at that point, right? So I want to find the slope, or ultimately the equation of this line. And then the second thing that I want to solve for, for this particular question, would be the slope of, or the equation of, sorry, not just the slope, the equation of the line that is perpendicular, right? So we're going to find uh, m perpendicular, right? So that's what we're going to do, but we're going to apply our law of first principles to do that. Okay? So we need to solve for the, the equation here. What are we going to do? Well, we're going to apply our first principles. So the first thing I should see on the page would be f prime of x would equal the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all divided by h okay and now because they've given us a specific value you're okay to plug that value in and it work appropriately right so we can see that here let me move this over and save some space so inevitably i'm going to need it okay um Let's find each of these two pieces, so the x plus h, but we can solve for exactly where it is at x equals negative 3, right? So, f of negative 3 plus h, well, that's going to turn into 2 over 3 square root of 1 uh, minus negative 3 plus h. Okay, and so we can distribute that. I like doing all the work for this so that I have just a, an expression to plug into the equation or my first principles. 3 square root of 1 plus 3 plus, oops, sorry, minus h. Okay, and so I get 2 over 3, uh, 4 minus h. Okay, and so you could plug that in, and then you're going to plug the original. Actually, you could find additionally here what the other thing you could find would be. Ooh, I'm in a funny spot here because I'm going to mess up the graph. Okay, we could also find so you this is the thing that you're going to plug in to f of x plus h. Right, and some of this is review from yesterday. Hopefully, they're just trying to explain it in a different way as well. Right, f of x is going to equal. Uh, you can plug in the value of negative three and find what f of x is actually equal to. Right, so we can say three square root of one minus uh, negative three. Right, well, we're going to see f of x here. It's going to be two over three square root four which will be 2 over uh, 3 times 2, 2 over 6, 1 third. That's the value that you could plug into here. Okay. Now, I, I like doing all this side work because it kind of cleans up the first principle stuff. Um, and now you just can just throw that in there and, and manipulate what's there. 
so that you can ultimately get the um, the limit there, right? Ultimately the slope. That's what we're after is the slope, right? So we're going to run through these first principles here. Um, and uh, we'll see what comes out the other end here, right? So we're going to see, okay, F prime and specifically, okay, specifically we're looking at F prime when X is negative three. And when we approach the limit, H goes to zero, we're going to plug in this information two over three uh, root four minus H minus one third, all divided by H. Okay. Now, all we have to do here, at this, this looks very complicated, right? All we are doing right here is creating a common denominator between this and this so that I can add or subtract them. Okay, so that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to multiply. Um, actually, we could probably multiply, just multiply um, this one over here by the root 4 minus h. Okay. I'm just checking something. Okay. So f prime of negative 3 will equal the limit as h approaches 0 of 2. Okay. But here's the catch. Well, we already have a 3 in the denominator. So we can go 2 over 3. 4 minus h minus 1 over 3. Now, I got to get the two denominators to match. Well, how would I do that? I could multiply both of these by root 4 minus h. Right? And so we're going to see f prime of negative 3, the limit as h approaches 0 of 2 minus. Uh, root 4 minus h divided by 3 root 4 minus h. Okay. Now, we've now arrived at a little stage here where I would rationalize the more complicated of the two okay so i would say okay well let's 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 get rid of the the radical that's in the numerator there by multiplying by the conjugate right as you guys would have learned yesterday all right this is just it in um practice so we're gonna say two minus we're just basically gonna copy paste this right four minus h over three root four minus h That'll be under the square root. And we need to multiply by the conjugate. So we're going to say 2 plus uh, root 4 minus h over 2 plus root 4 minus h, right? And then we just do the work accordingly, right? Well, when we do this, I've come to learn as of yesterday, okay, that um, we multiply this and this and this and this, okay? And then we have a common, and we just leave the bottom. Oh, sorry, guys. Sorry, 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 sorry. I'm forgetting, and I, I, I do this sometimes. I forget. I was like looking at the solution here. I'm like, where did this number or this value come from? So let me just, uh, I just got to fix something here, guys. And then, not a big thing. Messed up the question, but not a big thing. Okay, we're forgetting one thing in the, um, we forgot to divide by H and I'm bad at that. I'm bad for that. Okay. So don't forget to divide by, <laughs> forget, you're forgetting a piece of first principles. Okay. Don't forget to divide by the H. I'm like looking at it. I'm like, where did that extra H value come from? Forgot to multiply. Okay, so we're okay. So now we can just do, let's do the work in the numerator. Um, 
And you know what, guys? I'm not a huge fan of writing fractions like that. What I've been doing some of the work to is multiplying by 1 over h, which helps me a little bit. Okay. Um, we're going to see here. Um, the h, you know what? We should probably. Sorry, guys. I'm just stumbling a little bit here. About here, I would say let's. Uh, Let's multiply by the 1 over h here, which will go, it just simplifies things, okay? So we'll put that in there. So we multiply the denominator by that, and then so we get a, a 3h. Now we're back on track, okay? 3h in the denominator there, okay? And so what we get here in the next line, we're going to get uh, 4 minus, right? Remember, it's number and number, and then the radical and the radical. Right, so 4 minus 4 minus h all over 3h uh, root 4 minus h, and that's going to be multiplied against 2 plus 4 minus h square rooted. Okay, it's worth taking the time to try a couple of these questions together as a group or have a couple of videos. Um, because these questions, you can see how, like, if you forget an H or something silly, it messes up the whole question. Okay, and so it's just it's good practice. We'll we'll take a little bit of time to go over, um, and I'll give you the appropriate amount of time to learn these first principles idea, right? Because um, the the overall message is going to be transferred to something else later in the course. So we have to like have a. It's important not to lose sight of what this is actually doing. Uh, but at the same time, it's a requirement for you to know how to do this, okay? And so it's worth taking a little bit of time to run through a couple more of these questions, okay? And relating it to the graphs. So we're almost done. You'll see if I were to distribute this in, right, the negative, I'm going to see that f prime of 3 is going to equal 4 minus 4 plus h divided by the denominator. And I'm going to cheat. You guys can't do this. Unless you have an iPad, right? So we're going to see that we're just left with the H, right? And then we arrive at the fact that the H's can cancel from the denominator, right? So F prime of 3 is going to equal, like I can cancel this H with this one. And what am I left with? I'm left with 1 over 3. Man, I keep forgetting stuff. I'll fix something in a sec. There's a, there is a lot of stuff that you guys got to pay attention to, and even me doing this over again, I'm forgetting stuff. Don't forget about your... I get carried away in, in the math of it. Don't forget your limit. Until you actually... Um, until you guys actually plug in the limit or evaluate the limit, don't stop writing it. And like a lot of this is like you prompt yourself and then you go, oh, I forgot about that. Um, now you can actually find what the slope is when x equals 3 when you evaluate the limit by plugging in h equals 0, right? So as h approaches 0, we're going to see something like this. 3 times the root of 4 multiplied against 2 plus the root of 4. And so if we were to do the math on that, we'd see 1 over um, 3 times 2 uh, multiplied against uh, 2 plus 2. And so we see 1 over 6 times 4 which is 1 over 24. All right, sorry that was a little bumpy. Guys, these questions get a little bit, uh, a little bit, uh, you, know, you can see there's a lot of stuff in there, okay? We're not, <laughs> we're not done yet, okay? So this is your slope. That is the slope of this green line. Okay, it's important to remember that what this is. This is the slope of this line here. Okay, and so if you have the slope of a line, we learned yesterday, if we know what the slope is, 
is 1 over 24, and you know the x value that produced that. The x value that produced that was 3. And what was the y value? Well, we learned what the y value was when we plugged in the value of, sorry, negative 3. Oh my goodness. Okay. We learned what the value was when we plugged it in. It was negative, uh, sorry, one third. Okay, and so we can find what the B value is. So let's do that. So Y equals MX plus B. You can find the <clears throat> value of B by plugging in. So we go one third is equal to one over 24 multiplied against X was negative three plus b. So we get 1 over 3 is equal to negative 3 over 24 okay you'll find that if you do the, the finding the, the um, common denominator you're going to find that b is equal to 11 over 24 which means our equation will be I'll write it down here. Y will equal um, the slope 1 over 24 X plus 11 over 24. Okay. Now, one last thing. It's pretty much the same work, right? the exception that we need to find the last part of this asked us to find what the equation of the normal was okay that's the equation of this the only thing that changes in this process is the fact that the slope is going to be what we call the negative reciprocal right and so our m value this time is going to be 1 over 24 is a negative like flipped so we we know that our slope value here is going to be negative 24 we're still interested in the exact same point, right? So it's still x equals negative 3, right? And the y value is still 1 third. And so we're just going to do the work again and find what b is equal to. Okay, if you guys do this, you're going to see the same thing, right? Plug in y is 1 third, x is, or sorry, let's do the slope, negative 24 times negative 3 plus b. So you just do the math, right? And if you do all the same work, again, you'll find that b, b will equal negative 215 over 3, right? And so we can rewrite our equation Now, one thing you guys will see, okay, this is the equation of the normal, right? I'll highlight it so that you guys can see. I'll highlight both of these. So that's the equation. Now, one thing you will see is sometimes in your answers, um, even yet as recent as yesterday, me and me were working through these questions, they like to write the, the, um, the answer sometimes in standard form, right? standard form of a line, um, which basically means that you can't have any fractions or a negative leading coefficient, but you want to see it in like something like x plus y uh, plus, plus the constant. It's equal to zero, right? Or the b value. So you're going to see here, if you were to rearrange this and write this particular question in standard form, you're going to see that well, first off, you're going to bring this stuff over, right? The leading term AX can't be negative, okay? It can't have, nothing can have fractions in it. So we're going to say we're going to have 24X plus Y plus 215 over 3 is equal to 0. Okay, and then you've got to get rid of the fraction that exists there by multiplying everything by 3, and you will see... Your final answer, maybe sometimes in the, in the answers, you will see 72x plus 3y plus 215 equals 0.
So you could see either of those two answers in the solutions. Okay, just something to be aware of. Okay, so that was a much more complex question, right? Um, then the question I'll show you below here, it won't take too long to do the question below relative to this one. If um, it's important to realize what this stuff is, graphically I did this just to show you to, to connect with things that you've done in grade 12 functions or grade 11 functions, producing graphs, and then connecting it with what we did yesterday in finding the slopes of tangents at particular points, okay? So you'll see uh, today's homework questions for this this lesson will be very similar to yesterday's. Uh, just the functions got a little bit more complicated, so it's worth spending your time on them, okay? Um, so I'll stop it here as a part one, and then I'll do the, the, the second part of this, uh, hopefully in half the time, okay?